Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis, and a big thank you to my newest Patreon supporters, John and Armad. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you all had an excellent weekend and your week is off to a pleasant start. Unlike the stock market, which was initially down on some concerns out of data from China and the global market, of course, the ongoing virus concerns. But today we're going to talk about Tesla specifically, of course, as you can see at the time of recording, down about 5%. The overall market looking at the NASDAQ and the SPX are only down about 80 and 34 basis points respectively. So why is Tesla down so much today? We're gonna find out. Now, most of you guys know I don't spend that much time looking at the day-to-day -day price swings of Tesla, but today I do believe there is one news item that is actually probably the cause of most of this downward trend today. So we're gonna look at what's going on and is it warranted or not? And I thought this news piece was actually really interesting. So BHP, the company that Tesla signed a nickel supply deal with recently, is now considering to sell their petroleum business, which is worth about $15 billion. BHP said it's in talks with Australian oil and natural gas company Woodside Petroleum on a potential deal to combine BHP's petroleum unit with Woodside. Analysts estimate the petroleum business has a value of at least 15 billion and a deal is being explored while BHP separately hunts for a buyer for its thermal coal mining business. But why this is potentially great news is because it would lead BHP to focus more on mined commodities, which include iron ore, metallurgical coal, copper, nickel, and potentially potash. So there you have it. If BHP can unload this huge, massive business and focus more on mining, specifically copper and nickel, that would be a great thing for Tesla since Tesla already has a supply deal and a relationship with BHP, not to mention just getting away from the petroleum business altogether. Now, yes, of course, it will be sold to someone else who will then continue to operate it, but at least BHP seems to be shifting away from the petroleum industry. And in case you missed it, July 22nd of this year, BHP enters into a nickel supply deal with Tesla. This was covered in a prior episode, so if you like seeing stuff like this, you can always subscribe. And here's a very quick clip of Grimes at Giga Berlin. You can get a sneak peek inside the factory, but I kind of thought it was a cool video altogether. Conducting the robots in their glorious ballet. <laughs> that Grimes, she's so stylish. And one last quick thing before getting into Tesla stock today, I thought this was a great anecdote. Somebody asking about why Tesla uses the 400 volt architecture rather than the 800 volt like Porsche uses for the Taycan. And there was a comment that I thought was excellent at explaining it, so I wanted to share. By settling on a single voltage architecture across all products, Tesla doesn't have to build a separate supply chain for 800 volt parts and building an 800 volt supercharging network. It's cheaper and less complicated. Remember that Tesla's aspiration is also to reach for cheaper cars, not just the high end vehicles. Basically, Tesla was there first and 400 volts was a good enough compromise for the time and there's more benefit in staying with a known architecture, which still enables things like Plaid and 250 kilowatt charging rather than jumping to 800 volts. Besides, Tesla is working on the semi and the mega charger, which may or may not use 800 volt architecture. So the fact that they're not yet shouting about it doesn't mean they're not working on it. I agree with everything mentioned here. And an important point here, basically going from 400 volt to 800 volt does not mean a 2X in the charging speeds. As you can see right now, it looks like there are no passenger EVs charging at 350 kilowatts. It looks like the Taycan holds the record with a peak charging rate that is not really sustainable of 270 kilowatts. Of course, Tesla's V3 has the stated capacity of 250 kilowatts at max capacity. But that brings us to the news item for today that in my opinion is most likely the cause of the Tesla stock drop today. The US and NHTSA is probing autopilot problems on 765,000 Tesla vehicles. This investigation will basically cover everything that Tesla has sold in the US since the start of 2014. NHTSA has identified 11 crashes since 2018 in which Tesla's on autopilot or traffic aware cruise control, TAC, have hit vehicles at scenes where first responders have used flashing lights, flares, an illuminated aero board, or cones warning of hazards. So essentially they're saying autopilot is struggling to recognize these parked emergency vehicles as well as the emergency warnings leading up to those vehicles. Now, before I show you CNBC's coverage of this news item today, let's go to Tesla's website and look at how they define autopilot for all customers. Current autopilot features require active driver supervision and do not make the vehicle autonomous. There you have it. Hey Carl, this is what a lot of people have been calling for for some time 
And as you take a look at shares of Tesla, you see they're under a little bit of pressure, not extreme pressure, but a little bit of pressure after the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration announced that it will be opening a formal investigation looking into Tesla's autopilot technology. What will NHTSA be looking at? Well, specifically, it will be looking at 11 crashes where Tesla vehicles were in autopilot mode and they crashed into emergency vehicles. Those crashes led to 17 injuries, one fatality. This will involve the models S, X, Y, and 3. 765,000 vehicles, basically everything Tesla has made from 2014 through 2021. Altogether, NHTSA has reports of 31 incidents involving autopilot technology. That includes these 11, and there have been others as well. But for this investigation, it'll only be focused on the 11 crashes. By the way, those go back to 2018, those crashes. As you once again take a look at Tesla over the last five years, as this stock has moved higher, Elon Musk has repeatedly defended autopilot, even as critics have said, look, there are not enough safeguards in here. It's camera based only. It doesn't use LiDAR technology. Uh, it allows drivers to think that the car is completely self-driving when it's not. Elon Musk has at times said, yes, it's not completely self-driving. At the same time, he has also sold the perception, if you will, that autopilot is essentially the way for you to get in your car and your car is going to take you from point A to point B. Though, again, when pressed on analyst calls and at other times, Jim, he has said, sure, it's not 100 percent self-driving. So we'll see what happens here with the uh, NHTSA investigation. Just a reminder, Jim, the way this works, NHTSA investigates. If they find there's a, a flaw with the technology, they go to an automaker and they say, you should recall this technology or come up with a solution. If the automaker says, no, we're not going to do that, then NHTSA goes to court to force a recall. But we're a long ways from that happening. We still need to see exactly what happens with this formal investigation. Well, Phil, I think that's a great report, but it made me think, are those really bad numbers? I mean, over a long period of time, I think it's very few. And then I question, let's say drunk driver versus sober driver. Uh, how many people would a drunk sure. driver have killed? So I, I don't know. I mean, I think it sounds like a pretty good, uh, anybody gets a uh, crash is all bad. But anybody, that's a very few number, isn't it, Phil? Well, it depends on how you look at it, Jim. Uh, some people would look at this and they would say, there are 31 incidents, 11 crashes in this investigation, 31 altogether that uh, NHTSA has acknowledged. Um, so the question becomes, are those the only ones that we know about? And the other question becomes, is the technology being marketed and sold to the public in a fashion that makes them think their vehicle is completely self-driving? Because it's not. It is not self-driving technology. And so that's the question, Carl. And ultimately, we'll see if anything comes of this. By the way, we have yet to hear from Elon Musk. Remember, they disbanded their media relations department. Uh, and a few reporters already tweeted at Elon saying, Elon, do you have anything to say about this investigation? We'll see what he has to say. So the sad part here is that no matter how Tesla advertises autopilot, people are going to misuse it and abuse it. That's just the way humans work. But as we get to how I think this will play out, what I think the worst case scenario for Tesla is here, I wanna show you guys this clip as it kind of is a follow through to what Kramer said about drunk drivers. Now, I'm, we're not talking drunk drivers in general, we're talking about these specific accidents with autopilot engaged and the circumstances around those. Nice to see you all. I'm gonna make this one short but sweet. Uh, Bloomberg today have announced, uh, as you will all be seeing, that autopilot is being probed by the US government over collisions at crash scenes. Okay, I've got some notes up here, uh, which you'll understand in a minute. Uh, there have been four, eight, uh, about uh, 10 or 12 crashes over the last three or four years that they're looking at. I'm just gonna give you the details of the crashes this year because I can't be bothered to go back further. You'll understand why when you hear what I'm about to say. Okay, the, the four crashes this year that are being probed by the US saying that they are autopilot's fault potentially, that has just wiped off tens of billions off the Tesla stock today. This is how ridiculous this is and why I think the price will just bounce back. February the 21st, Montgomery County, 1.15 a.m. in the morning. Okay, the driver was arrested for suspicion of driving under the influence and intoxicated assault. <coughs> Number one. The second one this year, March 21st, Lansing, Michigan, 1.10 a.m. in the morning. We're already seeing a pattern here. Uh, the driver had a suspended license and the police said that it did not believe he was using autopilot. May 21st, Miami, Florida. 
the driver was going at 128 miles an hour, okay? Not using autopilot. Uh, July 10th in San Diego, 3.09 a.m. in the morning and the driver was arrested for DUI. This situation is absolutely ridiculous, guys. There's nothing more for me to say. Now, look, I'm not trying to argue that autopilot is perfect because it is definitely not. Everybody needs to be hyper aware even when using it. That said, I think over a few years having 11 accidents or even 31 total going back to 2014, it's not that many like Kramer was saying in the grand scheme of things. And when you add into that all of the people that are misusing and abusing autopilot, that number of actual incidents where autopilot is actually to blame are much, much smaller. So my interpretation of the whole situation is this. I personally think the most likely outcome here is with regard to this. The NTSB also recommended that NHTSA require Tesla to have a better system to make sure drivers are paying attention. NHTSA has not taken action on any of those recommendations. The NTSB does not have enforcement powers and can only make recommendations to other federal agencies. So this has been an ongoing conversation for years now. As we know, Tesla has that interior cabin facing camera that behind the scenes they are definitely working on and doing things with. So I think ultimately this is going to be the main thrust of this investigation. Of course, yes, making sure autopilot isn't really like some faulty technology, which I'm pretty sure it's not. And it's more a matter of the driver paying attention. So if anything, I think Tesla may be forced to do a little bit more with driver monitoring, kind of like a worst case scenario situation. And NHTSA has already said the investigation investigation will assess the technologies and methods used to monitor, assist, and enforce the driver's engagement with a dynamic driving task during autopilot operation. Of course, let me know below what you guys think. How do you think this will play out? I'd love to hear your opinion. But moving on, so Elon was asked, do you have a revised estimate on the button release, the wider release of the FSD beta? Elon said beta 10 or maybe 10.1, going to pure vision set us back initially. Vision plus radar had us trapped in a local maximum like a level cap. Pure Vision requires fairly advanced real-world AI. Elon keeps mentioning that, especially ahead of AI Day coming up August 19th, but that's how our whole road system is designed to work neural nets with vision. And speaking of when that version 10 or 10.1 will be coming, Elon was asked, what comes after 9.2? Are we going to 9.3 or 10? Elon said 9.3, probably 9.4, and then maybe 10 significant architecture changes in 10. So maybe a few weeks, but probably a few months before we see that beta 10 version. And in case you missed it over the weekend, Elon did share this update about version 9.2 and some of the new release features. Go ahead and take a screenshot if you'd like as I'm not going to read this to you. You can do that on your own if you're interested. And with regard to Tesla wanting to retain Robin Denholm as the chair of the board, Elon chimed in saying Robin is great. The shareholder meeting is going to be October 7th and as a lead up to that, it's already been three years since that 420 tweet from Elon and the SEC settlement that required Elon to step down from his position as Tesla's chairman of the board. Tesla replaced Elon with an impartial chair for three years and that period is actually ending later this this year. Robin has been a member of Tesla's board since August 2014, a total of seven years this month. And as you can see in an SEC filing, Tesla has said it wants Robin Denholm to continue as the chair of its board of directors. And a last fun item for today, the Model Y accounts for nearly 40% of all EV registrations in the US as the EV market share overall rises to about 2.5% in the first half of this year. This 2.5% overall market share is up from 1.5% just one year ago. And taking a look at the top 10 US EV registrations, the Model Y and the Model 3 sit atop the leaderboard. Not even close in third place is the Chevy Bolt EV. And noticeably missing from this list, we have the Model S and the Model X. Of course, production was down most of the first half of this year, but with those getting ramped up in the back half of this year, that will of course only help Tesla sales numbers in the US. But that's all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.